everybody. Welcome to Influence Northeast Podcast. I am your host, Chingri Paul. A lot of y'all asked to make this podcast available uh, with a video on it and publish it on YouTube. So I'm making that possible because of your request. And joining with me today is a good friend of mine who is a multi-talented guy. So we've been friends for a very long time now, more than a decade, I, w- I would say. More than a decade, definitely. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, my man, he had worked with a lot of big uh, corporate companies, uh, but now he came back home a couple of years back, and now he's working at an NGO, helping and empowering women of our society, correct? Mm-hmm. At the same time, he's also he also runs a side business uh, built on his passion for creating and crafting things. So I'm really excited to talk to him today. He is none other than my friend. His name is Dolrich Kazingmei. Uh, I'm so excited uh, to have you on the show, Mr. Kazingmei. Thank you, thank you. Uh, I'm also excited to be here. Uh, this is the first time I'm doing anything like this, so it's a little unnerving. But hopefully we can just discuss and you know get something out. Absolutely. Podcast is still a very new thing in our community, yeah, so absolutely. a lot of people are just getting to know what this is. Yeah. And yeah, before we get started... Can you tell us your background of who you are and what you do? Of course, of course. So I'm a wild child. I like to do a lot of outdoor activities and things like that. I often go to the jungle, you know, explore things out. Always interested in making stuff with my hands. Yeah, but life, you know, takes us to many different situations. And after my studies, I went to live the typical city life. Mm-hmm experienced quite a few bit about that and you know at the end of the day eventually i want to return to the nature of who i am Uh so that's why i came back i have a lot of experiences most of my education is done through schools local schools here interaction with people uh, community service everything has been done here so Eventually, I wanted to come back and, you know, serve the community, do something for the community as well. And that's why I, you know, thought of joining an NGO would be a good thing. Okay. Uh, the NGO that I'm working with is called Friends of Women World Banking. Friends of Women World Banking. Yes. And okay. so the main area where we work over here in Ukrul, uh, not only Ukrul, mm-hmm. but Manipur as a whole and uh, Nagaland. We do a lot of livelihood and skill building activities, mm-hmm. which involves uh, identifying women who are in need of those kind of trainings. And then we'll train them in skills, valuable skills. Well, um, but I want to talk more about the work that you do at uh, the NGO that you're currently working at. But before we jump into that, I want to know more about sorry. your personal story. When did you move to city? Did you finish your uh, plus two here in Accrual? Can you tell us a little more about educational your background. educational background? So yeah, I finished my 11th year mm-hmm. in Accrual. After that, I went to Maram, Don Bosco College. For your graduation? For my graduation. Okay. I did uh, English honors. And then basically I wanted to go into educational professional. Okay. Like a teacher or something like that. Professor. Okay. Cool. Because the the only good thing that I, you know, apart from the handy works that I do, Uh only good uh, in English, English literature and English, you know, interested in that as well. Okay. I did English honors and then I, it was especially very good for me because I was working with the corporate Mm. and working with the corporate you have to have a good, you know, communication skill. Absolutely, 100%. Even though I was not able to do anything on the computer at that point, because we didn't have the kind of facility that we have these days. So it was especially difficult for me to on the technological front, but the communication was okay. Mm-hmm. That's why, you know, a lot of the big companies, I, if I even if I give the interviews, on the face value, they, you know, just take me because they think I can do the job, you know? Okay. Because I, I was able to speak well. Yeah, that's great. That's basically the story of how I moved to the cities and started working for... Uh, fortunately, I, I was able to work with the big uh, names in the city. For example, for MX, 
American Express, uh, Barclays, Google's and you know Google and companies like that. So yeah, that's been my story uh, of how I graduated and went to the city. And, you know. Yeah, for me, back in my high school, I was really good at math science. So I took up uh, science in my 11 and 12 standard. But then I moved away after I finished my plus two. I moved to Pune. Mm -hmm. That was back in 20, 2011. And then because uh, <laughs> of family problems and financial problems, I couldn't pursue uh, BSc. So I chose uh, BA in my grad school. I think that's typically the biggest problem that we have, you know. In our community? Also in our community, yes. Plus... Um, we have this uh, mindset that we can we can never be good at math science. It's you know uh, for the mainland yeah, people, for the mainlanders okay. and the people in the valley. All know, right, maybe so. We have that kind of uh, mindset. I think that uh, pushes us down or keeps us down to the level where we cannot, where it is very difficult for us to rise up. You know, mm -hmm. the one thing that we can do to overcome this challenge would be to work with the students as well, who doesn't have any knowledge yet about the outside world, and mm. how technology is impacting us at this moment. And I have friends who are already in that field, who are engineers, uh, who have studied software engineering and things like that. And they are all also of the same mindset. Mm -hmm. I want to know more about the creative work that you do and also uh, the work that you're doing at NGO. But We'll talk more about that, but at the same time, I want to know more about your experience, your life and experience while working at these corporate jobs. You know, the names uh, that I know are big, big corporate companies that a lot of people can even pause an interview. You did your graduation at Don Bosco Maron, and then after that, you moved to city directly for work. So how old were you when you first started working at corporate job? Um, at a corporate company, maybe twenty three, twenty four. Okay. I mean, uh, what what would you say would be the biggest challenge that you faced at your first job? We didn't have computer classes, right? You know, and that's the most important thing. You can, you know, talk if it is only talking that is, you know, involved. Mm -hmm. It's fine. I mean, I can do it, but you have to talk and you have to use the computer. And I barely knew uh, how to operate. MS Word in the computer class, mostly the teachers are not available, you know, computers are not working. So the facility uh, in that area, technological area, has not been there during the college or high school. And I, yeah, that's the biggest challenge uh, that I faced. Uh, gave an interview to the first company that I worked. What? It's the name of the company. Uh, Converges. Converges. It's a very popular company. Still have friends who are still working there. Yeah, it's not that big or popular right, now. Right, right. But during that time, it was a big name. I like agree. IBM and mm. things like that. And I think I only stayed for a month. And okay. I left because the kind of software that they were using mm -hmm. is too complicated for me at the time. Because, mm. like I said, I barely knew how to use uh, MS Word. MS Word. M yeah. And then they're so. using. Uh, DOS based kind of system, you know, that software. Okay. Yeah, it's telecom. So, you know, process transactions and uh, other things. They have a software, yeah, right, where they where they operate. And it was the biggest challenge, I think. Well, uh, when I first started working at a corporate company, I didn't even know that control C and control V is copy and paste. <laughs> that was my that was that was my experience at my first company. I think <laughs> that was like ten years ago. The biggest challenge that I faced, and I asked them I'll leave because it's kind of embarrassing, you know, just to think about it. Yeah, seriously, a lot of you know young graduates won't go through that kind of problem because we are so tech technologically advanced now. What do you f what do you find most challenging about being an entrepreneur, especially in the context of our society? The obvious answer, the first reason would be financial assistance. lack of financial assistance okay. and lack of working capital to f start your um, business. business. Yeah. Um, and also the problem is that a lot of people who do business here think that they will start very big, you know. Mm. Uh, one other thing is that we don't do proper 
market survey as well, like, which is big problem. If you are to conduct a business or start a business, you must know how to do a proper market survey. So in order to run a successful business, there are a lot of things that you need to do. But as we are talking about the challenges, I think uh, we don't do proper market survey. We don't check the demand and supply uh, aspect of the business. And then we just start business because people are doing it and they see success in that. But people who are doing a successful business over here, okay. they have been doing it for years, years and years. And then you expecting to perform the same way as them is it's unrealistic, you know, in a sense. So financial, one big challenge. Mm -hmm. And then they want to start very big. Unlike the mainlanders who came over here and worked under a big, bigger retailer, mm -hmm. you know, and then they save up and then they start their own business, you know, mm -hmm. they start small. That's their concept. If I, even if I start small, I can grow, right? That's their mindset. Out here, people, what we do is we'll just start big. But you see a lot of uh, like returnees from the COVID situation come back and start business and close down in six months. Mm -hmm. That's the perfect example, you know, that I can give. So right now you're working at an NGO. So that's your nine to five job. Mm -hmm. You're also running your own side business. How do you manage to run your own business when mm -hmm. you have like your nine to five it's, job? It's very difficult to do this, especially like out here, it's only me, mm -hmm. right? Deployed yeah. from our head office. I'm looking after Nagaland and the state of Manipur. I'm assuming you're not planning to work at this NGO, you know, for the rest of your life, I'm sure. You, Obviously, that's, yeah. I mean... Uh, but why haven't you turned your business into your full-time job? Why are you still working at this NGO? Um, big reason would be to give back to the community. So, like, it would be good to, you know, do something that can actually help uh, change, not the community. I'm not concerned about the community as a whole. Okay. But one person's life, if we are able to have an impact, then I think that fulfills the purpose of you know, that question. Yeah. I want to add to that, you know, no matter how smart you are, uh, no matter how much money you have, no matter what position you are in in a, in a society, uh, no matter how smart people say you are, if you're not, you know, giving something back to the community, if you're not serving the community, one way or the other way, if you're not helping the community grow, then you're not smart enough. You know, you're not good enough. No, I mean, we would, we will never be smart enough if we think about it, because mm -hmm. we will never have acquired uh, all the knowledge in the world. So the NGO that you <clears throat> work at is all about empowering women. Now, while we're yeah, talking about empowering women, I want to ask you this question. It's a very controversial uh, question, I would say. I asked this question on my Instagram post, and a lot of folks responded to, to this question. Here it goes. Should beauty contests be banned in our society? And a lot of folks responded saying, yes, it sh we should ban beauty contests. And they gave a lot of reasons why we should bend it. And I'll read it to you in a, in a, in a few minutes, but I want to yeah, yeah. hear your take on this question. Should beauty contests be banned? Or is this really empowering women or is this helping more or is it damaging no, our society? A lot of people want to point out that it's an objectification of women's body and things like that. You know, mm -hmm. They try to justify with that, but I think we should rather encourage it. Have you seen this kind of uh, opportunity in this kind of contest as, how do I put this? People like who have won this contest and things like that. Okay. They are very successful now. Look at Papa, Papa Jui, Miss Manipur, right? All right. The, the kind of platform that she has had, you know, after getting the Miss uh, Manipur. She has inspired a lot of uh, women to be confident, to be strong, right? Okay. People are looking at her for examples and, uh, you know, everyone wants to have a good life, right? She's enjoying the, having the time of her life. Now. <laughs> and a lot of opportunities have presented um, themselves, I mean, to her. That's true. So like a lot of positive change we can see, you know? 
I mean, my take is that we should encourage people to do that. We have this uh, Miss Nagalen, what's her name? Uh, Andrea something? I don't know. Because I'm not into know, this he, kind of beauty contest I know, uh, competition. I mean, if you watch Instagram, I mean, if you're on Instagram, then you will see a lot of posts about this girl and she played in a movie. Really? Like in a Bollywood movie? In a Bollywood movie. Wow, I didn't know that. So like, I mean, the kind of opportunity that can, I mean, the doors that can be opened up. I agree on that. Yeah. Objectification is, no, I, I don't believe that, you know. Maybe in their like very conservative mind, um, that could that can be true. Mm -hmm. However, I don't see it that way. Okay. I want to be more on the more progressive in this particular matter. See, if one person in the family mm -hmm. becomes as popular as uh, the ones which we have spoken about. Then you're you are also like uh, in a way impacting your uh, family members and also will be able to support them okay. in ways which you otherwise wouldn't have been able to. So like fair, I can't say. I mean, it's a bad thing. It's All a right. very good thing. All right. So when I asked this question on my Instagram post, yeah. I got a few responses. So I'd like to just uh, sure, sure. read it out to you and <laughs> let's hear what they yeah, say. Yeah. So as a question, should beauty contests be banned? And this girl said, those without brains should be banned. I asked, you mean the contestants <laughs> that I were like without brains? And she said, yes. And she said, she has seen too many dumb women in the like beauty pageant competition. Yeah, and it should be banned in Manipur because uh -huh. only beauty without brains show up <laughs> and those with brains don't want to lower their standard by competing with them. Yeah. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I completely weird. agree with her. No, no, no. I, I mean, I watched a couple of like <clears throat> beauty I know. contests. I've seen the videos. On YouTube and then it's hilarious. I know, I know. It's, it's like, where do they... Where do they find these women? They're not even screened or, you know, I'm just wondering, like, they just pick that up from the, you know, <laughs> from wherever and then put it on the stage. Like, what's going on? Like, it's so uh, funny. So I think instead of, like, helping them build confidence, I think it's going to crush them because obviously no, if they're going to be that, that, that kind of platform of and don't know how to even communicate you to a meme. the audience, then yeah. yes, you're, exactly. You're, you're becoming a meme, you know. So another friend of mine, another friend of mine from Nagaland, she said, yes, it should be banned. I asked her why. And she said, it's overrated. Even in Nagaland, every now and then there's a beauty competition. And she said she hated it. Uh, it's in college, like state level competition, village level competition, etc. And she said, there's too many competition going on. And people focus more on dressing, dressing up instead of thinking about the yeah, environment. Yeah, I think that's a very big problem as well. I think uh, there should be some sort of screening, you know, and some sort of grooming way to before they actually so, come for yeah, interview. So if you go to the, this is a, we're talking on a village uh, level, you know, stage mm -hmm. or town level or state level. If we go to a bigger stage, obviously you're groomed. That's why they, they have this screening process for, for, uh, you know, other bigger platforms. Yeah. And then they will teach them even how to walk, how to talk, a lot of other things, maybe at least at the, like a state level, mm -hmm. the representatives should be able to answer, you know, questions confidently and like i was saying screening should be done mm, and then we are seeing that those women winning as well so if we just don't look at the uh, face value i think uh, that could good you know impact i agree 100 percent. but <clears throat> yeah i mean what they're saying is also true because we have seen that right <laughs> exactly it's it's freaking hilarious All the place like you find <clears throat> memes not even the uh, beauty pageant for uh, the ladies, for women, but for men as well. You have seen one of the videos, like, it's so funny, you know, the way he introduced, it's like totally scripted. Okay, like yeah. He read it and then he came and... He memorized it and then he... And on the stage, yeah. And then okay. he forgot <laughs> <laughs> He forgot the line, his line. His <laughs> line. <laughs> so you can have... The it. introduction, like the way he introduced... 
himself. I mean, yeah, especially in our community, if you're not comfortable speaking in English, then you know you can speak in our own dialect. And yeah, any... but I think they have a certain point system for speaking in English. Uh, maybe. I don't know. So yeah, but I have nothing against people who are into this kind of competition. No, no. And there's that. nothing. Man, you can't say it's absolutely wrong or it's Same. absolutely right. And I think it, there's a I mean, gray area uh, when we totally, talk about you know beauty comp yeah. contests. Yeah. The other problem is that we have is we we are so opinionated, opinionated. You know, like we have to <clears throat> give our opinion on everything. It doesn't have to be that way. Just observe it. If you like it, you know, go for more. If you don't, just move on. Right. We want to comment, we want to put our views across, but what does it matter? People who are doing certain things that you don't like, they just keep on doing it. Uh, you just have to, you know, turn around and just walk the other direction, mm -hmm. right? I think that's one of the uh, problems that we, in our society as well. Okay. Uh, like people are too people opinionated, are, they wanted to not give only their that, opinion no, on everything. Yeah. So. <laughs> If you observe, let's say like in a party, you know, or in the concert that we had, mm -hmm. the festival concert. Oh, you mean the two Northeast people, Autumn yeah, Festival? Yeah, two okay. people got a little drunk or, you know, tipsy and then they got into argument. People who doesn't have any problem will come and watch and also join in on the fight. What's the purpose of that? You know, what's the use of that? Mm -hmm. That's just an example. So, so there will be a lot of things like that happening mm -hmm. just because you can't turn around and just walk the other direction right yeah you just have to be there witnessing the whole thing they just want to talk to those people and say you know just move on you have no purpose here this is not going to serve you in any like positive manner just walk walk on mm -hmm. yeah i agree i agree a couple more questions sure. are you given a chance uh, for you to give an advice to your 20 years old self, what would you say? I would ask myself to learn as much skills as possible. Mm. You know, mm. I'm doing this, like I, I'm acquiring skills. Uh, I'm past 30 now. Mm -hmm. I'm only starting it now. Okay. How old are you exactly? 33 going on. Okay, 33 running. Yeah. All right. So like, I mean, if you don't mind me asking, why are not why are you not married yet? So yeah, that's, <laughs> that's the million dollar question. That's a million dollar question. <laughs> Everybody's <laughs> asking me that. Life is complicated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't have to answer that question, but let me let me ask a different one. Uh, what's your ideal type of women? I like uh, shorter than me. All right. Fair. Not particularly like. Let's just talk phys uh, physical aspect first. Fair. Not. Too chubby. I, I prefer the thinner one. Okay, slim, <laughs> not chubby. Yeah. All right. No, I think this is a very awkward thing. You know, whenever you want to describe <laughs> fair skin, um, not a lot of physical attributes. I think I can share, but uh, in terms of character or personality, yeah, character, intellect, sensible, mm -hmm. being able to empathize with or sympathize with someone's okay. condition situation. Is something which is really kindness obviously mm -hmm. that is also a very big thing smart you know smart smart street smart or whatever you want to characterize it and if someone is too dumb then you don't grow you know and can be taken advantage of okay if she i want someone to keep me on check check and balance fair you know, like, do you like say um a career-oriented women or a less career-oriented woman? Career-oriented would be like difficult to for, for me personally. Okay, so you're into traditional women. Not exactly traditional women as well. Okay. In between, maybe. In know? between. Yeah, if there is, because uh, if I have to do my own work work uh, for myself, mm -hmm. be my own boss, yes. then she should be the one who's standing next to me. You know, doing things with me. You're saying that career-orientedness, she's not necessarily working for other people, but mm -hmm. she 
is working with me. I, I understand what you're saying. But not exactly a nine to five career type job. Mm -hmm. She should be not traditional, you know, in that sense. I don't impose anything on her. Okay. I mean, the current one that I have. If I'm able to do it, I'll do it. If she can do it, she does it. So we have that understanding. Okay. I think that's just right. We haven't started working together as that okay. as that pair, but uh, she has the street smart and the technological, you know, know how to help me. Okay. Yeah. So you guys are in a long distance relationship, right? At the moment. Yeah. How do you manage, you know, a long distance relationship? <clears throat> I don't think for me personally, I can do it. But I can't. I can't. There's no way I can. I can do it. <laughs> yeah. Some people can. Some people can. That I agree. That's just the part of so my, you're uh, we, a person who can do it. So tips and tricks. I don't have like tips and tricks. We just speak on the phone. Or we, I mean, communication is key. One hundred percent agreed. You need her to understand, you know, your situation, and you have to understand hers as well. Mm -hmm. But yeah, communication is one thing. The other thing is like we have been in a very long relationship, like eight, nine years now. Wow, uh, eight years. Next year will be nine years. Okay, so when's the big day? We have this day? understanding between us. All right. That's why, like, and um, if I broke up with her now, it would be extremely difficult for me to, you know, move on, date on, or uh, date another, not a girl. girl. Okay. So like, no chance. <laughs> <laughs> no, but she has, she's perfect for me. That's why, like, good for I you. Don't look for any other, you know, extra. Oh, so the. Ideal women that you were describing earlier, I think it's it's it's, it's all her, right? Kind of. <laughs> okay, so, so you have to work on it, you know, a lot. I agree. I agree. It's, Relationship it is all about work. Yes, it doesn't happen overnight. Just uh -huh. keep, we have had eight years to do that. So like, it's not. I mean, she has changed me in a lot of ways in a very positive manner as well. And, That's great. Uh, Hopefully, I did the same for her. So we are very compatible uh, at this stage. Wow. Yeah. That's why I, you know, I'm not looking at, you know, other, other, other ladies. Other women? <laughs> okay. No need. No need for me. It's just uh, more work. I don't, I'm not, I don't have the time for and energy for that. Yeah. Fair. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that's, that's the story. Okay. Um, um yeah. so you have lived you have lived uh in city for a very long time. Nine years, I think. Nine years. Nine yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um uh, and <clears throat> you have you have been friends with uh you know different kinds of women in your life, right? Yeah. So my question is like, are there any difference between girls from our community? So I'm talking about Tankul girls and girls from say uh, the valley, say Maitai, or from Nagaland, or from mainland India? No, I don't uh, have a lot of friends who are girls from other communities. Okay. I just stick to our community. Okay. It's not by choice, okay. uh, but by chance. Uh, so what would you say about uh, girls from our community? Some are very, I mean, really, really good. I agree. Uh, some... Not so much, you know, I don't want to go into that because living in city changes you in a lot of ways, you know, mm -hmm. and some change for the better, some change for the worse. I've seen a lot of, uh, a lot of people who have, you know, gone bad, girls gone wild like that, okay. teens gone wild like that. Okay. And so there are things like that, but I think uh, in the... Uh, City environment, it's inevitable in some sense, you know? All right. So, yeah, I mean, we're not from a place where we have a lot of money and wealth, riches. Mm -hmm. yeah, money is attracts everyone. We're going to the city for, for that particular reason. Mm -hmm. Some wants to work hard and earn money. Mm -hmm. Some people want shortcut. Okay, right? yeah. So, yeah, yeah, I mean... You can understand. Yeah, I absolutely so agree with the... you. Man, you mentioned earlier that you're not good at giving advice. How about, uh, you know, what is the best advice, piece of advice that you have ever been given? 
Uh, my father used to say one thing. Um, uh, when we were younger, mm-hmm. uh, my siblings and me, we used to, you know, fight a lot. Fight in the sense like brothers, sister fighting, you know, brothers, brothers. So uh, he used to say like, uh, you will not have that time like this uh, in the future. Mm-hmm. Eventually, you will all go your separate ways. Mm-hmm. So while you are together, love each other, mm. love each other, and you know protect each other. Mm-hmm. Life is not forever, so we don't know when it will end. But during this time when we have um, together, we can love each other, and we can support each other. Because you see, if you go to a lot of funerals, you know, like people will cry and people will say good things about the person who died. It doesn't matter anymore, right? He's dead. He's gone. He's not coming back. Right. But during his time on earth, did you, you know, have a good relationship with him? Wow. Did you love him? That will matter the most, right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, I mean, people have, a lot of people have died, will die, you know, I mean, the family members, within the family members mm-hmm. as well. But how we value each other after uh, someone's passing would be the memories. Mm-hmm. So if you don't love, for example, we're siblings and we're always fighting, we're getting into arguments all the time, we don't love each other. And then I die, let's say. Mm-hmm. In my funeral, you cried and you just, you know, apologized. You say sweet words, what good does it do? Mm-hmm. So yeah, I think um, when we have time, we should act in a very loving manner compassionate manner not just saying in words that we love them but love is all about action Action. right yeah actually if you i've never said i love you to mom or to my brothers that kind of practice is not in our culture we we don't have that kind of uh, practice so yeah and it's a good thing if we learned it and if we say more often to one another that we love them that we care for them uh people like care for them yeah, people used to say, I love you, I love you, and then mm-hmm. the word becomes overused. So, I mean, if you overuse something, it loses value, you know? Exactly. <clears throat> so it's better to show it through your action. I think that's... 100% right. Yeah. If people aren't following you, where can they go online to follow you? I have D Kazingme underscore letter word. That's my D Delta Kazingme underscore Leatherwork. Leatherwork. Okay, that's your username on IG. Yeah, IG. Okay. Or you can just write Ulrich Kazingme and then my pages. That's my main page. All right. I mean, the personal one. But I have some, uh, I have mentioned it on my bio as well here for the other account. Yeah, on Facebook as well. Same thing. Okay. Coming like here, I'm planning to put more energy in this particular area. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know a lot of people have made orders and placed orders and mm. it's taking a lot of time because like I was saying, I am doing multitasking basically. Mm-hmm. Doing the nine to five and also at night I used to you know, work. So a lot of people might be even disappointed, you know. Yeah. All right, y'all, please go and check him out on Instagram, D Kazingme underscore leather work and support yeah. his work. Uh, thank you, Mr. Kazingme, for coming on the show. Thanks, buddy. Thank you so much. I hope we can do this again. 100%. Thank you for listening to Influence North this podcast. And I'm your host, Jimmy Paul. And that's going to be for today's episode. And until next time, peace out. Thank you. Thank you. Peace out.